God, when you get to the turning point, you see, as Lamentations 3 and 22 says, he protected you in spite of you. Did you understand what I'm saying? You know you. You know where you were going. You know what you were doing, and you know that it had to be God because you couldn't turn you around. In fact, some of you, all of you are honest, if you had your way, you would have gone that direction. And now you see that that direction was a slippery slope on your way to hell. Some of you all were actually literally saved, like me. I think I gave you that testimony too many times. And so you were made alive in Christ. You know, in, 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 the, uh, in our brothers uh, who are Italian, uh, some of the brothers are made. You ever heard that term, made? You were made to be a child of God. Oh, God, do you get what I'm saying? See, don't give yourself no credit. Yes, you responded, just like your children. You know how you raise your children, and then they talk about who I am and what I am and what I've done, but they don't know that it was your money that sent them to college. It was your training that put them on the path of righteousness. You protected them. You guided them, and now all of a sudden, this is what I did. You didn't pull yourself up for your own bootstrap. It was the hand of God on your life. Come on, give him praise. You know it was God. And that's why you need to know that that's the power of the testimony. Because the more you talk about what God did, now God gets a chance to move into the dialogue. See, what you don't know is that God knows intricately, intricately the details of the heart of the person you're talking to. You don't know all of that terrain. But the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. He moves into the heart and he uses the words that you say and he links it with some testimony in their life or some ugly area in their life that you just unearthed. You don't even know it. How many times have you been under some teaching and that word just zeroed in on you? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? That word just convicted you. We had a Bible class on Tuesday and the woman of God stopped me when I was teaching. She said, Pastor, uh, I got a testimony, and I'm not, I'm not proud of it. And she talked about the fact that she's working on her foul mouth. And she said it just kind of comes out at the most inopportune time. And, and uh, we were talking about the difference between conviction and, uh, by God and condemnation by the devil. And uh, that was an opportunity for her to unearth, hallelujah, you know, like a volcano, something's really down in there, and then eventually it starts coming to the surface. And so she just spewed that out. And I said, now that's an example, my sister, of conviction. The Holy Ghost convicted you to be able to reveal something. Think about it. Why would you tell your business in front of this whole Bible class? Why would you do that? Unless God was working on you. And I am so proud of you. And you should saw the smile come on her face because she was honest enough. That's the kind of thing that draws people to Christ. Not that you're perfect, but that God is working on you. Hallelujah. So, so we talked about life before Christ. Now, you got to be careful there because some people spend so much time on life before Christ, it makes you wonder if do they want to go back. <laughs> They spent all this time, this is what I used to do. Okay, let's get past that. Are you bragging about it? Paul said, all things that I accomplish in this world, I count it as refuge, that I might win Christ and to be found in him, not having my own form of righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness that cometh by faith, that I might know him power of his resurrection, even the fellowship of his suffering. Hallelujah. And so your turning point means if there's a single word there, it's sight. God is now illuminating your mind. And if you better know, when I heard that gospel, when, I was, when the Lord was turning my heart, he brought me back to that ignorant thing that I did when I was 12 years old in that church. And then he started lining up what he's teaching me now with what was working on me then. How many know God has been working on you all your life? 
all your life, and he'll connect the dots for you. That's why that happened. That's why that happened. That's why that happened. That abortion, that works in it. I didn't say it was good. It's working together for good. I didn't say it would make you happy. I said it's working together for your good. Isn't it good if you had and were protected by uh, having an abortion uh, and, and then have, were, were able to have other children and some other lady is getting ready to have an abortion and now you can say, baby, no, that's not what you need to do. No, because let me tell you about my life before Christ. I had an abortion. And let me tell you right now, it's, it's a painful thing. I'm still struggling in my spirit. That was over 20 years ago. And I'm wondering, what would that baby have looked like? No, baby, you don't, you don't want to do that. You, don't, you, need, you need the Lord to give you strength, turning point. You need the Lord to give you strength so you can be able to navigate this decision because I can tell you right now, that's not where you want to go. Can you see how God uses bad things for good? So that you and I can change. 